Hi, so in uh, respect to lesions that uh, are considered small vessel ischemic changes or migraine, for example, uh, this is a good example of uh, someone with small vessel ischemic changes. And uh, if you saw the uh, brief video I made regarding multiple sclerosis lesions, you can easily see some of the differences. Uh, and this is a big source of confusion of as many patients who suffer from small muscle ischemic changes and do not have multiple sclerosis are wrongfully uh, diagnosed with demyelinating or uh, multiple sclerosis lesions. So this patient is an, uh, a slightly older patient than the MS patients that I showed you. And this patient does not have MS. She has what we call small muscle ischemic changes. And what is small muscle ischemic change? Well, these are little capillaries that tie off due to chronic either high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or other cardiovascular risk factors, either uh, in singular or multiple fashion. So here you can see what I was referring to in the other video. There's a confluence of these bright signals surrounding the, the ventricles, not necessarily in a perpendicular fashion, but kind of in a confluent layer fashion and this is typical of small vessel ischemic changes and not MS. Um, so some of uh, uh, you may argue, well, what about the singular lesions found in other areas of the brain, such as here, this, this one here uh, in the white matter, and this one here in the white matter, could those be demyelinating? Well, they can be, but they're very unlikely, uh, namely because they don't have that perpendicular angle to the uh, fluid filled spaces like the ventricles. They are relatively small in comparison to most MS plaques, although MS plaques can also be small in size. The vast majority of them are larger than the uh, spots that we see here. And um, <clears throat> they don't really uh, have that juxtacortical positioning that uh, MS lesions would. So this lesion would have to be closer to this area here, closer to the gyri or sulci between different cortical layers. It would have to be larger and generally speaking um, uh, more of a perpendicular or sphere, spherical uh, uh, angle and shape respectively. Uh, if we look at other sequences, so um, you can look at <clears throat> Um, the uh, coronal flares here, similar to what we looked at for the multiple sclerosis patient. And yes, again, this is uh, really well seen how there's a confluence of uh, white matter bright uh, signal surrounding or layering actually the ventricles and not necessarily perpendicular individual plaques uh, and this is typical of small muscle ischemic disease. Again, it's related to chronic high blood pressure. Some may argue, what about this lesion here? Does that uh, qualify as possibly an uh, MS plaque? Well, it can. Uh, certainly, it is bigger than some of the other lesions that we saw. But again, it doesn't have the typical perpendicular right angle fashion. Uh, and at the end of the day, most of us uh, as physicians and radiologists and um, clinicians need to make a judgment as to uh, the entirety of the plaques. Uh, so can this person have, at this age, uh, I think she's in her late 60s, have both multiple sclerosis and small vessel ischemic disease? Uh, and uh, it's it's you know, less likely. Of course, there is criteria. The most famous one is the McDonald's criteria uh, re related to how to diagnose multiple sclerosis radiographically. And this does not meet the radiographic criteria for Mac by McDonald because it is a singular lesion and not uh, uh, of uh, shape and form and number that you typically see with multiple sclerosis. So again, this is an example of small muscle ischemic disease and how it can be distinguished with uh, multiple uh, with multiple sclerosis, um, and um, so uh, it's a combination of the uh, 
uh, shape, orientation to the CSF space, the size, and uh, presence or absence of other factors uh, that you can consider such as age and uh, the totality of all of the above when uh, making a diagnosis. Uh, uh, as clinicians we should always avoid making a diagnosis based on a single uh, MRI image or slice uh, it's best to look at the entirety of the picture, including the patient's clinical presentation, age, and other factors. Thank you.